People often tell you to pay attention. This implies that attention is some kind of currency, something that must be paid. No thank you, I might say. I cannot spare any attention. Well, I thank you for being here. You really don't have to pay attention to this video. But today we'll discuss the end of the world. Welcome. Somewhere in this Althist website, althist.com, we can see a good collection of showcases. Everyone has been adding to it, and it's awesome. These are highlighted ones, and then if you go to the community one, you'll see individual catalogs thus far. And we're not moderating anything yet, and I don't care what people post, but I want it to be factual, not artificial images, as we can see here. And maybe that'll be our only rule, is they're not doctored. But otherwise, 99% awesome and over the top. Really. One of my favorites is this one called Somewhere in Time. It's got about a thousand pictures and the style that I like. And what a display here. And I've been thinking a lot lately. The Hopis talk about this realm being reset at least four times. I think we're living in the fifth. The Mayans. Long cycles. Short ones and long ones. And old mythology from 2000 plus years ago, talking about the five ages of man, in how we went from the golden age backwards to essentially the plastic age that we're living in now. And one of my favorites is the Indian texts, talking about the yuga cycles. I think the Indian texts have been most preserved, and in these yuga cycles it's the same thing as the five ages of man. The first yuga is the best. People live the longest. Time is slow. The realm is built out as beautifully as it ever will be compared to the following cycles. And there is a destruction in between each cycle, and each cycle seemingly being shorter than the previous one. Everything plays out, expressing itself in these cycles. And we, of course, just like all the other myths of people, are in the last cycle. The Kali Yuga. The Kali Yuga is the worst, the darkest, the most wicked cycle. Lies and illusion, injustice, destruction, and also the quickest cycle. This would be comparable to Revelation, the same myth being portrayed. After Jesus, there's a thousand years of prosperity, followed by a dark season, and 200 years of darkness, similar to this Kali Yuga idea in the Indian myth. And I believe in this cycle, there's complete darkness, but there is also complete light, just as bright. You only have to strip away the illusion that you have been masked in. Everything is covered up, and if you could only peel off the illusion, or the mask, or the facade, you would see the truth. And that's what I'm talking about right now. You would see the golden age before us, in ruins, and the stories of the the Indian myth of the Yukas would make more sense than the stories we're given as actual accounts of how this realm came to be. And I think it's similar to a rebirth, one's understanding this. And actually you can just witness the destruction and understand what's really going on. Not get too emotionally attached and know when you are being fed falsities in history and the present. And you can have peace. The old world as you knew it, your ideas of what is and what was, will die. And in the place of your former beliefs, you'll have a new understanding, one that is grounded in truth. And I believe that those of us that are good struggle in this world, because it's not good and just in the Kali Yuga. It is a destruction cycle, the end in which the new will be reborn. And I must believe that the conditions are simply different in a more favorable yuga cycle. And building structures like this and living in harmony are more conducive to a favorable 
cycle. And we don't really need to fight against the cycle, only understand it. And I think that's what this research has helped me ultimately do. It really makes sense of what's going on in this realm. Now, some would say that that's depressing, that first rant about the Kali Yuga. And I don't know, it's just how you look at it. Maybe at first, but I think the idea is to be freed, not so serious. Are you gonna be serious in the Kali Yuga? Yes, you should be serious about basic things that require seriousness. But this whole business of life is not so serious. Not as serious as we would be led to believe. This is the Taoist idea of a man clinging to the side of a river, holding onto a root of a tree. This is serious. And then some children that he notices floating down the river on their back, laughing. I think we all start out with the mentality that must have prevailed in the Golden Age. And I think wherever you find yourself, at whatever age and whichever cycle, you can awaken to this wonderment that exists. And you can find this in nature, or you could find it in the old world, which in my opinion is modeling elements or aspects of nature. Everything telling a story and having a function and mirroring something greater and also something less great, fractal, all part of the whole. Here we can see a bunch of star forts and having this fractal geometry. And when examining closely, built of brick, and this one is one of my favorites, this one really showing the complexity and depth and scale of what these star forts are. I mean, there's no mountain hill here. This whole thing is the building and this part is just poking up, now overgrown. And this reminds me of Mount Maru, or the most northern center point of our realm, as indicated in old maps, and now having been erased, slowly, as the maps progressed, and here I always find it interesting that we're allowed to visit these catacombs because they reveal something very important. Millions of bones arranged so meticulously as if people were underground for a long time. And this was a means of disposing. The Native Americans have a technique for cleaning a bone in which they use a type of beetle. You bury... A skull might be a deer, and the beetles will eat all the meat off of the bone. They'll go into the cavities, into the skull, eating all the brains. And the beetles also drop their waste all over the bone as they're feasting. And the waste is like a yellow slime, and it actually acts as a beautiful yellow polish, a highly sought-after technique. And I'm not proposing that these were buried with beetles, only that they are just as clean and polished. I mean, I kind of empathize with these people. So disregarded, seeming disrespectful for any culture in any part of the realm. I mean, who was this man? Just one in millions. Oh, my name was Harry. Oh, hello, Harry. And what could Harry here tell us? What could these four people tell us? No, I don't want to tell him. All right. You know it wasn't fun, Gus. I know. And here's some pyramids with obelisks on top. And really looking just like a South American style pyramid. But this one is in Holland. Great. Here again, we see lines all around it. Okay, so this is fresh off the press. Thank you, David. A look at a plan of New Orleans in 1770 by Captain Pittman, the British Army. So here we go. We see the Mississippi River at the bottom here, and we see a very sophisticated grid system within a star fortification wall. And though we don't see depictions, we have them listed up here. The church, the beautiful church that we've seen before, Old World, a prison and guardhouse, governor's mansion, of course, some royal structure, number five down here on the river. An arsenal for boats, number seven here. The king's storehouses, 
Again, America becomes America officially in 1776. This is pre-America, officially. This map depicting the royal elegance that we see in the old world. Here we have reference to a building for a king. We have a hospital. And more importantly, we have a city laid out within a star fort in 1770. Next, I thought we would look at a little book. This little book is from 1899, from Kiev. I don't care how you pronounce that these days. And what we see depicted up here near the ocean Arcticus is cities of Tartar. The Magnus Tartarus. Here we see a king, and we see kings and castles everywhere. An abundance of beautifully depicted castles everywhere. We see a complex ley line system, and what seems to have been a glorious kingdom. And I don't care who you are, even a child would recognize these all as castles. Drawings of castles everywhere. And yet, when we're taught about the people in this time period, in this case, 1557, or is that a J? We are taught that they're primitive people living in wood shacks, and yet some of the last and greatest evidence can be found in these maps, coupled of course with existing either structures or ruins to present day, as we've discussed for years and seen proof of. The cities have changed their names, but the architecture and infrastructure remains. And when I started out my channel over five years ago, we looked at one of the oldest photos of Bologna, and it was a little old world city of skyscrapers. Towers packed in a city metropolis with a giant wall around it. And when we look at these maps, we see that such cities were most likely everywhere. So the Kali Yuga, it's not like it's being hidden from us. The only difference is we're being gaslit in present times. We see the evidence, we have the history, and yet we're led to believe that things are getting better just because we have cell phones, cars, and supermarkets. And so here's a little look at the Kali Yuga thus far. Fires throughout the realm, throughout our short history. The destruction of the temple and city of Jerusalem, all old world. Persepolis, 330 BC, destroyed by fire, it's still looking great. A superior polymer type blend here, holding up for quite some time. Next we have Lyon in the year 79. Lyon is in France, and I have family in Lyon. Magical feeling. I only went once, I was really young. But anyway, burnt by fire. Constantinople, burning. Fires in China, Germany, everywhere, no exception. A fire coming to a city near you. And these aren't just regular fires, these are the great fires. 1547, the Moscow fires. Now in the Americas, right away. Right when we get started, first settlement in Jamestown, Virginia, it's fire. And here are the ruins, looking pretty good. 1666, back in London again. An old world tower and castle city burning. The Burning Stone, that alone is fascinating. Just a city of stone on fire. And are these all separate events, or is this really all happening at once? And now has been laid out in a nice chronology for us. Are people so careless? They can build great cities, and yet they can't keep them from burning. 18th century, Copenhagen, the Starfort water-filled city. No, this city of brick and water has the same fate. Fire of Boston, Great Fire of New York City, 1776. Again, America is celebrated as becoming America in 1776. And look at this, there's already a city. And these primitive people, what are they doing? They're fighting while the city is burning. Some people are looting here. This man seems naked. But the city is completely built out and elegant looking. It's starting out, and yet it's on fire. And here, again, 1788 New Orleans. We no longer see these buildings listed, but we do see a great fire. 
taking out a chunk of the city. What a careless and clumsy people. And it's no different in Japan. 37,000 houses burned. Again, Moscow burns in 1812. Buffalo, New York, 1813. Second Great Fire of New York City, 1835. Here, a little look at life in 1835. These people aren't even looking at the fire that they're fighting. Hey, why don't you turn that hose towards the building? These people. This man running into the building. This man is saying, no, come back, don't be a fool. And it's no different. These buildings made of brick and stone. The Great Fire of Bucharest. Here we go. Old World on fire. A real heavy fire. And the people kind of just hanging out here. Just BSing. And it just goes on and on and on. And really, we see a lot of drawings of the fire. But seldom do we see pictures. Only the aftermath. Only as if somebody is rolling into these new, now cooked out towns and snapping a photo. Perhaps for the first time. Here we see the Great Fire of Toronto in 1904. Look at the amount of brick. These facade Corinthian columns facade blockage down here. Looks like another level could be seen down there. I see a hole or something. And a lot of detail up here at the top. And what do you do in the end? Well, you don't do what they want you to do. You discard everything you've been taught and find peace. Your peace. An inner, under, and overstanding of reality. And the kind of life that you would live. And I think we can still create our reality. And what have I learned about all this research? I think it's mostly that we've all been had. Everyone, in every nation, every advanced civilization, and primitive. Everybody upon in this drama. To make things worse, they have us all pinned against each other, fighting each other as nations, within nations, with political parties, while the leaders of these nations are often in the same boat, playing the people like fools. And I think the first thing we should do is stop fighting each other. Stop debating the topics they will have us debate and look at the bigger picture. And I think we can prosper in the Kali Yuga while everything is crumbling. It's a perfect time to rebuild. Most people won't notice. And one can still buy land. One can still build communities, homes, grow their own food, power their own homes for free, even if it is just solar and wind power. Land is the biggest tragedy. While homelessness is growing in America, nobody asks the authorities to free up some of the federal and state-owned lands. Free the land. Give it back to the people. And until then, we can still buy land. Cheap land won't have water, but you can drill a well. You can build a road and live free. Many of the homeless would not be enticed by free land. They would choose to live in their tents. Perhaps at heart they are nomadic tent people. But I think most people would be willing to build a home. And I think all people deserve an acre of land where there is no shortage of it. This is by design to make our lives more difficult. But I think as much as people despise the system, they are also enticed by it. And it's understandable. But as it falls apart and becomes unsustainable, there may be no other choice. So I think that's it for this week. I thank you for being here. God bless. I love you all, and I'll see you next week.